Welcome to the second programme in our series, Music for Body, Mind and Soul. Last week, we talked about the concept of deeper listening, or whole person listening, and how this has the potential to enhance your experience of the music you listen to. We illustrated this and brought the concept to you through Geraldine and Brenda's performance of the Spanish Sonata. Throughout the four-week series, we are inviting comments and questions from viewers week by week and look forward to responding to those in the fourth and final programme. So for this, the second programme, we are delving more deeply into the narrative power of music and how music can come out of a story, can hold a story and can convey a story. Through deeper listening, it is possible to find a stronger connection to the sound, to picture more fully the context and to experience the feeling the composer is exploring in the music. Geraldine and Brenda will perform three works by 20th century English composers. These pieces are lyrical, pastoral, passionate and pictorial, and each one has its own story. The first piece, French and Pond, is by William Lloyd Webber, father of two well-known sons, Andrew and Julian. Geraldine will tell you how she brought this particular piece to light. In the 1980s, I gave the first Radio 3 broadcast of three works that we're going to perform in this programme. They're all pieces of music through which we can explore our series theme of music for body, mind and soul. And in particular, by engaging the mind with the context in which the composer brought the music into being. What I'm hoping to give you here is a personal insight to each piece, which will provide a simple connection that you can ha inhabit as you listen to each performance. The unearthing of each of these pieces happened as a result of the research that I had been doing to rediscover lost or little heard British music. And it involved spending many hours in the British Library looking at microfiche film. Now, you can tell how long ago that was. Each of the pieces Brenda and I are going to play has its own special story. Whenever possible, when performing a new work, I like to speak with the composer about the music or at least someone connected to the composer if they're not alive. William Lloyd Webber died in 1982, but before I broadcast French and Pond in 1984, I was able to speak to Jean Lloyd Webber, his widow. Jean gave me the background to the story of writing the piece. She told me how the family enjoyed going to Frensham in Surrey for their holiday. The idyllic country setting inspired William to write a set of six country impressions for different wind instruments. Frensham, of course, is a place with a pond and this inspired William to write what he described as an aquarelle for clarinet and piano. Aquarelle is the technique of painting with thin, transparent watercolours. And for me, that certainly comes across in the simplicity of the writing. The musical lines are lucid and clear with the fluidity and freedom of water. Thinking of colours when playing music is something I do a lot. In my mind, it helps me to express the feeling of the piece whilst at the same time still letting the music speak for itself. I invite you now to relax, imagine the holiday setting and listen to the music as you sit with the Lloyd Webber family by the water as the sound paints a translucent watercolour for you. Thank you. 
Now, this is something we very often do when presenting music for body, mind and soul in live performance, which is to perform the music a second time. There is very little music which gives up all its treasures at one hearing, and the second listening can reveal so much more. You've now made the connection between what Geraldine told you about how she came to perform and broadcast the piece for the first time. You've heard its lyricism and simple pleasure. You've pictured a family holiday and the English countryside. So as Geraldine and Brenda play the piece again, you have the luxury of immersing yourself more fully and being in the moment with the music which is now already a little more familiar. The next piece, which I had the privilege of bringing to light, is Song Without Words by Edward German. This received its debut performance at a prom concert in 1898, performed by the Spanish clarinetist Manuel Gomez. Incidentally, Gomez was a founding member of the London Symphony Orchestra and German wrote the piece for him. The review of the piece, which appeared in The Observer, describes the work as simply a little gem, a theme of great simplicity and haunting beauty, full of grace and tenderness. Song Without Words was another one of my British Library discoveries, and I gave the first BBC Radio 3 broadcast almost 90 years later in 1988. It seems that the Edwardian salon music, for which German was rightly renowned, simply fell out of fashion with the upheaval that was the First World War. As you will hear a little later, it was the Great War that brought about the third of these English idyllic pieces for clarinet and piano. Finding a family connection for Song Without Words was not quite so straightforward, but I was eventually able to correspond with Winifred German, whose husband was German's nephew. 
She listened to the broadcast and wrote to tell me how much she'd enjoyed it. This, then, is a piece for enjoyment. There is a depth and richness to the conversation between clarinet and piano. You don't need to be a musical expert to appreciate this. What you need is a deeper listening intent. And by this I mean that you give the piece as full attention as you can find and allow it to tell you its story or sing its song without words.
As we continue to explore music for body, mind and soul, listening to French and Pond by William Lloyd Webber drew very much on the physical senses and an awareness of place, people and presence. In the piece we have just heard, Song Without Words by Edward German, it was an open and uncluttered mind, a mind without the usual commentary and analysis, that enabled the shape of the music to communicate itself. The third piece in today's programme, Pastoral by Arthur Bliss, is all about immediately engaging feeling with its raw emotion. From the opening phrase, we sense that this is a work that is deeply personal to the composer. Interestingly, it is written for the A clarinet, which is a lower instrument with different resonances, as Geraldine will explain. The third piece in today's programme is Pastoral by Arthur Bliss. And as Sarah's just mentioned, this piece was composed for A clarinet. Now, you'll see here that I've got my both clarinets. This one's the B-flat and this one's the A. And you can see there's only just a small difference in size. But to me, the difference in tone quality to the ear is remarkable. There's a warmth of timbre special to the A and it's so well suited to the Bliss Pastoral. My principal focus as a solo clarinetist has always been the performance and broadcast of works by contemporary British composers and extended also to lost or forgotten works. This came to the attention of a number of people of like mind and like interest. One of these was Lady Trudy Bliss, widow of Sir Arthur. Quite out of the blue came an invitation from Trudy to meet with her to learn about the pastoral, which had not been heard in performance for many years. Pastoral was one of two pieces that had been lost for more than half a century, but was rediscovered in a music shop in Oxford in 1975, the year of Sir Arthur's death. And then it was sent to Trudy Bliss. The other piece, Rhapsody, has still not been found. I was invited to give the first recent performance followed by the first Radio 3 broadcast of the work. And Trudy was to become a good friend over many years. She was a great writer of postcards and I treasure her friendship support and correspondence. Dear Geraldine, thank you for sending the press notices of your Hampstead recital. You certainly gave a lovely performance of pastoral and I kept thinking how pleased my husband would have been. And what a good audience you had. I've never seen the Roslyn Hill Chapel so alive. Many congratulations. Affectionately, Trudy Bliss. Pastoral is thought to be one of Arthur's earliest compositions and Trudy Bliss told me the story behind its composition and this story was then told for the first time at the broadcast of the piece. These are Trudy's words. Arthur Bliss was the eldest of three brothers, all musical. He himself played the piano, the next brother Kennard played the clarinet and the youngest Howard the cello. Arthur and Kennard were both in the Battle of the Somme in 1916. Arthur was wounded there in July and was back in England recovering when the news came that Kennard had been killed. The manuscript of the pastoral for clarinet and piano is undated, but we do know that the work had its first performance in London during the winter of 1916 to 1917. And its elegiac quality leads us to feel that this was what he was writing in that autumn after Kennard's death. It was a great privilege to hear these personal reminiscences firsthand and both a responsibility and a joy to give voice to this work anew. How important it was to have been told this story whilst the people connected to it were still alive from the opening bars in the lowest Chalumeau register of the clarinet, a sense of grief sweeps through the work, 
with its haunting melody and passionate outbursts. The music eloquently tells a powerful story. The devastation of the loss at the Battle of the Somme and at the same time, it tells a very personal story. There is an untold depth of emotion in allowing ourselves to be vulnerable to the pain of others. And if you are able now to open yourself to the music through the story of its coming into being, then I have no doubt you will have an experience of deeper listening. Thank you. 
In the third programme in this series, Music for Body, Mind and Soul, we're going to delve into some cross-cultural music and find out what happens when a composer works with music, traditions and instruments from a non-Western culture, in this case, from India, and how to get the most out of your listening experience. You'll hear extracts from The Roaring Whirl, an extended work written for clarinet, guitar, sitar and Indian percussion, based on and with narration from Rudyard Kipling's novel Kim. Until then, we hope you have other opportunities to try out your whole person listening. <laughs> 